When you think of soccer in Seattle, what do you see? Packed stadium, beautiful goals, overjoyed celebrations. Yeah, that's all part of the deal. If you scratch the surface and go a little bit deeper, you'll find that the sport is plugged into every corner of this community. People move to Seattle from all across the world, and each one of them brings with them a unique relationship to the game and to the club they support. Today, we're gonna to look at some of the stories that don't make it to the headlines about soccer in Seattle. It's Soccer Saturday, this is Home Turf, let's go. How many times have you heard someone say, stick to sports? It's kind of a lazy shorthand for the idea that the things that happen off the field somehow exist totally separate from the athletics we enjoy on the field. Grill FC is a Sounders supporters group that pretty much views things in utter reverse. That sports can be a way to express our real life values. I sat down with Cameron from Gorilla FC to learn a little bit more about their approach and to find out how they're harnessing the energy that happens on the field to do good off the field. All right, man, so what's your story? Who are you? What is Gorilla FC? Give me the, give me the scoop. Gorilla FC is a Sounders supporter group, and we're one of the four supporter groups for the Seattle Sounders. Uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit that is focused on community. So we kind of live by the moniker that we're anti-sexist, anti-racist, anti-homophobic and we just are all about building community and using soccer to build community and we go out in the community and, and do projects locally and internationally truly to uh, try and uh, better society through soccer. Why would you want somebody to get involved? Like, what would what would be the, the benefit for them to, to jump in and be a part of it? I mean, if you look at the Sounders, someone should be a fan just because they're good. I mean, we, we consistently have a great team, made the playoffs every single year that we've been in existence. Uh, you know, our GM, Garth Largaway, is building some... Uh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, which one go? <laughs> 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 that's two nothing. That's, yeah, that's great. <laughs> we gotta stay out here, because if we go in there, anything could happen. Yeah. Out here, the goal are guaranteed. <laughs> For Gorilla itself, we kind of have a self-selecting crowd. Mm. So it's people that kind of agree with what we're doing or interest in what we're doing, and they come and they support the things that we're doing outside in the community. We're all Sounders fans but we have a higher mission, which is to help the community. We believe that soccer is more than just a game. It is something that is, has a worldwide impact on and off the field, and we want to help build both our brand and the Sounders brand through helping the community. So whether it's been doing fundraisers after the earthquake in Haiti, we want to be able to have a direct impact both on our local community and the international community. And for you personally, like, what do you get out of being a part of Gorilla? Like, There's so much needed in Seattle right now and beyond, but if we just think about our local community and how the city has grown and the people that are being left behind, um, you know, as and people being pushed out. There's just, there's so much we can do. We have this unique opportunity with the professional soccer team here to be able to take that fandom and turn it into good. All right, Sanders are up. We're gonna go on to the next game. Thanks for having us. We appreciate it. Be good. Good luck. Soccer is one of the great unifiers. No matter where you go, you can find someone kicking a ball and who shares the same passion as you. I met a Wale playing a pickup game that features players from all around the globe who have moved to Seattle. He himself moved to Seattle just three years ago from Kenya. I caught up with the Wale to find out what did soccer mean to him growing up and what has it meant to him here since he's moved to the United States. Grew up in a place called uh, Malaba and Busia. Mm. So those are the borders of Kenya and Uganda. Mm. That's where I've grew up most of my uh, teen years. Okay. Yeah. And did you play soccer growing up? And then what else would I do? I can't think of anything that I would have done other than soccer. Maybe fighting. <laughs> that, that was some shit. Uh -huh. And there wasn't like someone who was like, you know, like a team, a coach kind of shit. We didn't have that shit. So it's like, for example, you guys live in a certain area, you guys come together and start playing together. Mm -hmm. You guys call yourself a team yeah. of that area. So you represent that area. Then another area does the same shit. Yeah. So what you guys do is you go and play against each other every yeah. now and then. When I came here, that's when I had ample time. So you come to a new country. I couldn't go to school at that time. I couldn't work out fast, you know, kind of thing. You get getting introduced to the place. I knew how to play soccer when I was young, but real skills, I would say I learned it here during that seven month period that I wasn't doing anything. One of the Sundays, 
this Mexican team didn't have uh, someone to play. One of the guys knew how to speak English, came to me and was like, hey, uh, we just need one person, can you play for us? I ended up playing for them as well. But come to find out, my coach doesn't speak English. He speaks Spanish. But the way he talks to us, simple stuff. He just says, awalo, awalo. Simple shit like that. You don't have to even use words. Simple signs kind of thing. Different. But one thing for sure, soccer, it kind of keeps you cool. And the best thing I like about it, you don't have to know those guys' language. You see a ball, yeah, I want that. You don't have to know their language, but you're like, uh-huh, me to you. Simple shit. You don't have to know someone's language. You go and play with them. But then uh, back in the days, I thought it was just a simple thing. You go play soccer and shit. But then you realize it has a rhythm in itself. It's like, okay, you, same shit. If you're a dancer kind of shit, you listen to music kind of shit, soccer has a rhythm in itself. Back in the days when I was young, soccer was all about winning. When you lose, you have to chase them away, that's for sure, or beat them up. But with time when I came here and I realized, especially Americans, I came to realize it's not about winning, it's all about having fun. Damn, that kind of changed me. I just go with this mentality, I'm going to lose, let me go and enjoy myself. I don't care what happens over there. All right, man. So for an Arsenal fan, I hate to do this to you, but we got a bunch of people here watching Manchester United. So I'm going to put you through it. Come on in. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's go. Hope nothing will happen. They don't beat us up after Man Uni. All right, we're wrapping up Soccer Saturday here at Mazatlan in Renton. We're gonna catch the Clasico Nacional between Chivas de Guadalajara and Club America. Let's get it. Sometimes you find community, but other times you have to actually go out and build it. Julio, Jamie, and Jesus are all diehard Chivas de Guadalajara supporters, as well as being members of the Sounders supporters group Para Fuerza Verde. These three were instrumental in helping create the Copita, a youth tournament aimed at young Latino players in Seattle and their families. I sat down with them during the Clasico Nacional between their Chivas and arch rival Club America to learn more about what it's like being a Chivas fan in Seattle and their work in the local youth soccer communities. When we first moved up here, there was we weren't able to watch the games because they didn't show them. So my dad bought a satellite, like a big like satellite huge. dish. Like to watch the games. Half of, the, <laughs> yeah. half of their backyard. backyard. That's how big it was. <laughs> and we, we actually, that's how we watch the games, because, yeah. And, uh, and we always, always try to, you know, keep that. My, my sons were born here, my daughter was born here, and they're all Chivas fun. Yeah. And it just, it just keeps on going. For, uh, for. I, you know, I'm a Sounders fan. I'm, for, I'm a member, obviously, of La Barra, but it's kind of hard. <laughs> So, anyways. So, shots? Yes. <laughs> In a napkin. <laughs> we started the uh, Copita, which is a kids tournament. And Julio came up with the idea of, hey, you know, let's make a tournament for kids. Now, the original idea was to bring more Latinos, more Hispanics, to know uh, the Sounders, support the Sounders. Introducing uh, Sounders players, giving uh, souvenirs from the Sounders, and that way people get to know the Sounders. In the first couple of years, people didn't understand it. Maybe we weren't too, like... No, we didn't know what we, we were doing. We, were doing. <laughs> <laughs> we just throw the kids and play soccer, but then... <laughs> we'll just, you know, organize the teams, organize the schedules, yeah. and but I was a rev, year, and yeah. parents were revs, and yeah. then it, and it got bigger and it, it got, got better. Yeah. So it's mostly for low-income kids that they don't have the money to play for a club or anything. They just play rec, uh, rec. rec teams, you know, recreational soccer, yeah. and they don't have the chance to play the tournaments that all these clubs play because money and yeah. and we, in that part we wanted to do that too. Yeah. We make a, uh, a tournament for those kids yeah. that don't have that chance to. Play in a in a tournament. It's not just a tournament, but I mean, you can see a really, yeah. really good team, really, yeah. really good players. Yeah. Really good players. Uh, the only thing they need is opportunity. So, just what does it mean to be a fan of the most popular sport in the world? Well, as we've seen today, it means there's not simply one way to do it correctly. When we look at soccer in Seattle, of course we see 40,000 people sitting in CenturyLink Field for Sounders games, but if you turn around, there are fans everywhere. The sport is everywhere. 
This is a sport that can ground us where we're standing now and connect us to where we've had to leave. And that is what it's all about. Yes, it is a sport. Yes, it is a game. It is only one ball, two goals, and 22 players on the field. But we've seen that the more you put into it off the field, it can be so much more. This is Seattle. This is home turf. Thanks for watching.